Hello everyone, today we're going to be jumping back into Standard with Mono Green Food Aggro. So, let's talk a little bit about what this deck is trying to do. So first and foremost, we have our early game threats. Things like the Teething Wormlet, which is going to be growing over the course of the game as we're casting and resolving our artifacts. And we also have Ginger Brute, which is going to be a great unblockable threat to get out onto the battlefield and hit our opponent with. We also have Audacity in the one mana slot. This is going to be great on Ginger Brew, adding some extra power to our unblockable attacker, and also good on our growing Wormlet and some of our other growing threats as well to make sure that we can deal that damage with Trample. Over in the two mana slot, we have the newly added Elvish Archivist here. Now, this is going to have two folds value for us. One in that it's going to be growing as we cast artifacts, but we also get card draw out of enchantments, and we do have four copies of an enchantment in this deck, so there is potential for that card draw as well. We have one copy of the Ozolith. This is going to synergize well with our plus one plus one co counters. We've got the Steel Seeker. Steel Seeker is going to help get some lands off the top of our deck and make sure that our draws are going to be mostly useful artifacts. Tough Cookie is one tough cookie of a card indeed. We're not only going to be able to get two artifacts onto the battlefield for two mana, both of them are also going to be foods, which is going to be a very important synergy for this deck. We can additionally pay three to turn a, a non-creature artifact into a 4-4 artifact creature, so that's going to be a very powerful attacker that we can start using as early as turn three. Now, Welcome to the Sweet Tooth is also a new enchantment. Again, that's the synergy with the Archivist here. We're going to create a 1-1 one, one human creature token. That's not too big of a deal. We can use that as a blocker. The food token is also going to be useful. We can transform that with the tough cookie. But the real kicker here is the X plus 1 plus 1 counters, where X is the number of foods we control. Actually, a lot of our creatures in this deck are foods. So with tough cookie and with ginger brew out on the battlefield, that's already 3 the saga makes another food so four plus one plus one counters potentially even more it's going to be very powerful patchwork automaton is going to grow similar to the teething wormlet uh, it's going to get those plus one plus one counters as we cast artifact spells though so this isn't enter the battlefield so this is some more secured value plus ward two makes it difficult to remove then we have sir ginger the meal ender which is a great artifact creature for us to have. It is also a food. It is a 3-1. It has the bonus of having Trample, Hexproof, and Haste if our opponent has a Planeswalker, so this is a great way to deal with Planeswalker decks. But the better value part of this card here is whenever another artifact we control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Sir Ginger and Scry 1. So we can actually use this to grow our attacker by sacrificing food tokens, which can be very powerful. Two Simeon Simulacrums are going to add additional plus one plus one counters to our creatures, help us out, and with Unearth, we can also potentially squeeze in some extra damage that way. And we do have a relatively low curve, a uh, bunch of forests. We have two copies of Mirex just to give us some mites if we'd like to in the late game, and then one copy of Beseju because there's no reason not to run that in mono green. Now, if you guys have been enjoying my content, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on my latest videos. And if you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a like. Let's go ahead and see how this deck does. Alright, so we've got our opponent going first, but this is actually a pretty good opening hand. I don't mind keeping this. Turn 1, Ginger Brute. We're gonna go ahead and play this. Now, a common trap that people may fall into playing this deck is seeing that we have the Steel Seeker or some other creature that would synergize off being able to play an artifact later. But we're actually not going to uh, go ahead and hold on to a turn 1 play if we don't have to. Next turn, we'll have a couple of different options. I think we're gonna go ahead and go with Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Get that human, start getting the food token, which will trigger the Steel Seeker. Work towards those plus one, plus one counters. Next turn, we can play out Tough Cookies. That's pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make Ginger Brute unblockable so we can swing out and get our damage through. Our opponent may have a removal spell, but if they use that, that's fine. And right now, we're leaning into the Ginger Brute strategy. We're going to try and make a huge Ginger Brute by 
the time this third chapter goes ahead and takes over. Next turn, we're going to want to play out both of our tough cookies. We'll see if our opponent has anything in the ways of blocks. Okay. They destroy the Steel Seeker, that's fine. The Ginger Brute is the more valuable creature for us. So I actually don't mind that at all. And, of course, not like they could have targeted it anyway, because Go for the Throat does destroy non-artifact creatures. So we are going to want to definitely focus on our artifact threats. Yep, he makes the Ginger Brute smaller. That makes sense. Food token. So now we do have some choices. I think we're gonna go with the Patchwork Automaton and one Tough Cookie over the two Tough Cookies. We'll swing this at Jace. I think our opponent's gonna be more likely to uh, block with the Spirited Companion this way. But it seems like they don't, so that's fine. So of course, this is about to go ahead and hit its third chapter, and when it does, we're going to end up with a fairly large Ginger Brute. We can, of course, also put those plus one, plus one counters on Patchwork Automaton, because it has that ward cost, help protect it from uh, our opponent's removal, depending on how they tap out this turn. Then with Audacity, we're going to be sitting in a really good spot as well. This is five plus one, plus one counters, which is pretty big. can also use our other mana uh, to use Tough Cookie's ability to turn one of those foods into a creature. You ready, Pom -pom -chan? Time to put our skills to the test. Alright. <laughs> so, we're gonna go ahead and put our plus one, plus one counters on our Patchwork Fella. Go ahead, give Audacity there. Now we'll use Tough Cookie's ability to turn this into a 4-4. Four -four artifact. Then let's go two attackers. We can't attack with the Ginger Brute because of our opponent's Kaido. I think we're just going to go ahead, Patchwork Automaton here, that into the Kaido, which is going to draw the block. And then we'll just go face again there. We'll s hold back our Tough Cookie. Yep, we draw that block. And everything's looking pretty good. So our opponent's down at 6, they're going to have to deal with the Patchwork Automaton, and that means we have the opportunity to use our Tough Cookie to make some tougher cookies, and eventually beat our opponent there, yep. They will have to pay that ward cost. I'll handle this one. So now our opponent only has 2 mana to figure out how to deal with this, and... They're down to one mana, and I don't think that's going to be an adequate solution. They'll plus Jace on the Ginger Brute, that's fine. Become subdued. All right, well, we are now in an interesting spot where we have a decision to make. Tough Cookie can guarantee the four damage here, or we could use Audacity to get three. We're going to go Tough Cookie gonna give that plus one plus one counter there we'll go ahead animate this food token get our opponent down to one of course our opponent is in the same situation they were in last turn where they're gonna have to use both of their planeswalkers to have to deal with the patchwork automaton and the ginger brute and we'll have plenty of other ways to get that last damage through So now our opponent does have access to 5 mana. If they did have a board wipe, I imagine they would have used it already. But Void Rend? Sure. Uh, they, they can tap out for that. Give us a card draw. Now I'm curious how with no mana they're going to stop us from attacking with 3 creatures with only 2 planeswalkers. This should be the game. Yep. Small tough cookie, that's fine. Yep, we've got it. Alright, so we've got our opponent going first, and honestly this is a pretty good starting hand, so we'll go ahead and keep. 
and we're gonna start with our teething wormling. We're probably gonna go ahead and draw some sort of removal spell from our opponent, but it looks like we don't. With a mono red, we'll play our pathwork automaton next and swing out with our wormlet. All right. Now this turn, we'll go ahead and play a tough cookie here. This will trigger both the automaton and our wormlet. We'll swing out. This is some solid damage, and it seems like we've got it. All right, so this time it looks like we've got our opponent going first. This is a pretty good starting hand, so we'll go ahead and keep a little bit light on mana. So we are going to want to focus on getting out the Steel Seeker. Either way, we're starting with our Teething Wormlet. Probably one of the best turn one plays for us in this deck. Next turn, we're going to go for the Steel Seeker if we don't draw land. If we do draw land, we'll go for the Automaton. So we do draw land. That means we're going to go Patchwork Automaton here. This sets us up for Steel Seeker Ginger Brute next turn. Now, of course, being an artifact, we do have our Automaton protected. Our opponent could draw another land here. Perhaps pay for the ward cost. Okay, I'm guessing Lily Sack Patchwork. Maybe they make us going. discard, I don't know. Yep, that's fine. Sacrifices must be made. So here we go, Steel Seeker. Ginger Brute kill Lily. Here, do we want to draw this? No, I think we're going to look for land. We can also get our Simulacrum out of the graveyard here, so that's actually a great card to choose to put in the graveyard. Now it would be my guess that our Steel Seeker is not long for this world. We're probably going to get hit by a go for the throat. Maybe our opponent has a cut down for the Ginger Brute as well. Either way, next turn we'll be doubling down on our Sweet Tooths. That is going to give us some creatures. We'll be getting some foods to put our plus one, plus one counters. We'll figure out where the best place to put Audacity is. Yep. We figured he wouldn't be long for this world. Let's go with our welcome. We'll put Audacity on Ginger Brute. Deal that three damage. Again, Gingerbread's probably going to get killed this turn. We'll draw a card. This is going to help us find our next land. With Tough Cookie and Welcome to Sweet Tooth, we'll have tons of foods on the battlefield for all those plus one, plus one counters. Interesting. So in this particular case, I'm going to start by going to combat and swing with the Ginger Brew. We'll offer a trade. And our opponent does not accept. So let's go with our Welcome and with our Tough Cookie. Our hand is empty now, so we are resilient to discard. And of course, we'll be getting a ton of plus one, plus one counters next turn. Tough Cookie can help animate our foods. We can bring back the Simeon Simulacrum with Unearth for some extra plus one, plus one counters. Right now, I'd say we do have a firm advantage over our opponent, though our opponent does have many more cards in hand. So as long as our opponent has mostly symmetric removal, I think we're gonna be okay. Sure. Yeah, good game. Looks like we've got it. Alright, now we are on the play. Four lands in our hand. Audacity. I think we're gonna take a mulligan. We can find a better starting hand. Like this. We'll get rid of one of our gingers, and we'll start with the ginger brew. So we have foods coming out full force this game. Let's see. I think we're gonna go with our welcome to sweet tooth here. 
So this is gonna set us up to make a very strong Ginger Brute. Oh, maybe this is the Fairy deck? We'll see. So now that I'm a little afraid of our opponent flashing out a Fairy, I'm actually gonna pause here and not attack. We'll see if they use removal on Tough Cookie. Yeah, we'll just swing with one. This gives them the opportunity to flash in a fairy and block. Perfect. Either way, we want to protect Ginger Brute. Okay, Kaido. Get in, get out. Easy mission. Interesting. <laughs> There's no secret I can't Another land, so maybe our opponent's a little bit flooded here. Let's put all those plus one, plus one counters on Ginger Brute. And then we can put Audacity for an additional two damage, but I do think we want Sir Ginger on the battlefield. We'll just swing out here. We have our opponent down at eight now. Of course, Sir Ginger now has Trample too, and Hexproof, Shieldred. Okay, so it's gonna be lethal next turn with Audacity and Ginger Brute. Now that our opponent's tapped out, we do have to be cautious of them playing out uh, another land, maybe holding up removal of some sort. No, looks like we've got it, so we'll draw, we'll lose our life. That's fine. Let's go ahead, Audacity. Can't be blocked. And we'll just swing like this. I mean, that is the best block for our opponent, but unfortunately it's not going to be good enough, and we're going to take the win. Alright, well, this looks like a pretty good starting hand. We are going to want to draw an artifact. As soon as we do draw said artifact, we're going to be in a great spot, but double archivist is going to be really good for us. And tough cookie is a good artifact as well. So let's go ahead and start with our wormlet. Alright, so here we're actually going to go for a little bit of a slower play, and play out our Archivist here. And now we are faced with a difficult decision, which is whether or not we want to play in a greedy manner. And I think we will, so let's go play out our Archivist. Let's go Ginger Brute. That's going to give those plus one plus one counters. And we'll be able to swing out for 3 damage there. Next turn we've got Tough Cookie for some extra plus 1 plus 1 counters. And of course with Audacity, we're gonna have our Archivist getting out of range soon, but they kill it with Go for the Throat, which does make sense. And Terra Sunder. Alright, so our opponent is afraid of the cards that we have, which makes sense. I too would be afraid. Tough cookie. Get some plus one plus one counters. We'll go ahead and put Audacity on our uh, Wormlet that doesn't have summoning sickness. Now it is worth noting that we've been gaining some life here, so we are up at 25 while our opponent. I uh, will sack that Wormlet. I want to keep Tough Cookie alive. Alright, so we'll use Tough Cookie here. And do we want to swing out? Honestly, yeah. We'll deal some extra damage, because they'll block there. And we've got our opponent down at three. We draw a card. This gives us access to another Audacity. I want to save Audacity for our next turn. Depending on what our opponent does here, we very well might have the win. Again, Tough Cookie with Audacity is going to be lethal damage. Interesting. So, let's go Tough Cookie. Um, and then let's go Audacity on our Tough Cookie. And now we will ask Lissa to block two creatures, which it cannot. 
good games. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed. As we saw, Food Aggro is actually a very powerful new standard deck. Now, you can run this in uh, green-black colors as well as just mono-green. You can also go green-white, get some additional value that way. But I just wanted to stick with a standard mono-green deck. It's been a while since we've had a strong mono-green deck in standard, and I do think that this is going to be a contender for a very powerful deck to climb the ladder with. Uh, you do have to be careful. Your opponents can stabilize against us with enough removal. We can face some difficulties into decks like those fairy tribal decks where our opponents don't care about the fact that our creatures are artifacts. But with Go for the Throat being such a popular removal spell in black, actually having all of our threats being artifacts is really powerful in that we can push through those black decks and kind of make some of their cards just dead in their hand while they're trying to deal with some of our big threats like we've seen in this video. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a like, and if you have any other ideas for a deck you'd like to see me play, why don't you let me know in a comment down below. I'll see you all next time.